Welcome to the Mark Steiner Show, Hear the Real News, and to another edition of Not In Our Name. We are going to the heart of the war that's taking place in Israel and Palestine. This will be a part of a series of conversations we're having from Israel, the occupied territories, Gaza, and Gaza is very difficult to get through to, as we talked about before, but we're going to bring that to you too as soon as we can. We now have a conversation with three men, all of whom have served in the, in the Israeli military, two of whom live in Israel, and the others here in the United States. They've all been peace activists, people fighting for dialogue and a future between Palestinians and Israelis. Nir Abishai Cohen from the Moshav al Magor in Israel was a major in the IDF, which is the Israeli army. He's a political activist, human rights activist, who was spokesman for breaking their silence. And he wrote a book called Love Israel, Support Palestine, and Is an Israeli Story. And joining us here from, from the United States is an old friend of mine, Josh Salzman, who served as a combat medic in the Israeli army in the war with Lebanon. Uh, he is an ordained rabbi uh, and has been an activist for peace for a long time. And we will be joined shortly uh, by Maron Rappaport. Maron is an award-winning investigative journalist for 30 years uh, in, in Israeli media. He won the Napoli International Prize for Journalism uh, and a longtime activist and one of the founders of the Land for All movement. And gentlemen, welcome. Good to have you all with us. Hi. Good to be here again. Yeah, it's great to have you back. It's great to have you back, Abishai. So I, l- l- let me just start with, with um, where we find ourselves at this moment, in some ways unexpected. But um, Abishai, let me begin with you. I mean, I just unexpected, but it seems that there's, this is a profound moment that could really be, create a significant change in what happens in the future. Yes, I agree with you. I think the the Middle East in general and specific Israel will not be the same after uh, this terrible uh, war. Uh, definitely after what happened in the nightmare of uh, last Saturday. And Maron, I'm glad. You, uh, good to see you. Good to have you with us. And so, 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 and, you, and the article you wrote really kind of struck me a, a lot. I mean, it's it's one of the things you said at the end of the article about what. In, in all the pain that was caused in this war um, that we'll get to in a moment, but you also thought it had left an opportunity for something to happen in the future, uh, even though it seems like the crisis is almost impossible to overcome at the moment. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I look uh, back to the history and, and, and I look on uh, the Yom Kippur War in 73, uh, which was uh, till uh, last Saturday the biggest crisis Israel uh, ever had. And a few years after this uh, terrible crisis, um, the, 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 the peace agreement uh, with with, uh, with the Egyptians uh, came. Uh, and I don't know if someone in, in during the war in '73 thought that uh, the, the peace with the Egyptians will will come so early. Uh, so if I, if I try to find like a, a little spot of, of light in in this really dark days uh if maybe try to hope uh that it will the the history will will happen again uh, these days yeah maron um yes uh, (laughs) good evening yes at at this moment it really seems very far i must say and we are there's no there's no thirst for revenge than anything else. That's what dominates the, 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 the atmosphere in the Israeli public at the moment. Uh, revenge to level down Gaza, wipe, uh, wipe out Hamas. This is, uh, you know, the slogan. And uh, even yesterday I heard on Channel 12, General, uh, retired General uh, Amos Yadlin, uh, talking about that the goal of the operation, the Israeli operation in Gaza, is uh, a new uh, Nakba too. That's how he uh, uh, phrase it in a very uh, plain way, as if it is a legitimate uh, uh, war uh, objective. And nobody even commented on this when he was talking about it. So... Uh, uh, the the atmosphere could lead to very dangerous places, and the blockade on Gaza and the fact that Gaza was cut off 
today, this evening, is cut off from electricity. Uh, there's uh, practically no running water. Uh, uh, food may be in shortage in just a few days. So uh, uh, really, and and uh, and uh, uh, military leaders and political leaders are talking openly about driving out hundreds of thousands of Palestinians into Sinai, pushing them out of uh, of Gaza. So uh, we are here in a very dangerous mood in Israel, very dangerous mood. But uh, in what I said in the article is that uh, paradoxically what happened here, it came in the middle of the negotiation. This, we didn't know, we don't know exactly where they were with, uh, with the normalization with uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, and the whole idea of uh, the Netanyahu uh, effort first uh, the Abraham Accord with the, the Emirates of Bahrain and Morocco and uh, Sudan and now with Saudi Arabia is that the Palestinians are not an issue. We can we could bypass Ramallah. He said it uh, in his own words. We could bypass Ramallah and have peace for Israel and prosperity. And we don't. We, the conflict is. Um, the conflict with the Palestinians does, does not really matter. What happened Saturday morning in a very brutal, cruel, the most cruel, the most, uh, you know, nobody can imagine such cruelty. Uh, but what happened is that certainly Palestinian, but they knew it all the time, but Israelis do understand that the conflict is with the Palestinian. It's not with the Emirates. It's not with the Saudis, it's with the Palestinian. And it is with the Palestinian that we have to deal with. Now, the first uh, instinct now is revenge. And I would even say, okay, if the conflict is with the Palestinian, let's drive them out of here. Uh, I even hear people from the Gaza uh, area, from, from the uh, people living around Gaza, from the kibbutzim that was so badly hit, saying uh, we will no longer have neighbors anymore. It's either us or them. Uh, so uh, one conclusion is, OK, if the conflict is with Palestinian, let's just uh, drive them away. And if not, maybe worse. But as I think, as I think, this is really not really possible for many, many, many reasons. Uh, I think that in a way, if you recognize that your conflict is with Palestinian and that uh, uh, the status quo is no, no more possible, what was in the 50, last 15 years, and going to Saudi Arabia will not help you, and you can't drive them away, then the only option is to have some kind of political arrangement with them. So this is why I am I have a glimmer of, of hope. It's very there are very bad days. The atmosphere is not at all an atmosphere of uh, of peace. But uh eventually this realizing that we are here stuck with the Palestinian and uh, all these dreams of uh, driving away in the in the Arabian desert uh, on uh, trains headed to to India uh, is uh, <laughs> is uh, really a fantasy. Josh. Yeah, I just want to set the context a little, Mark. Um, without taking sides, of course, but uh, we have to. Um, realize that we've had 75 years of systematic oppression of the Palestinian people. And um, that most recently we see the displacement of many, many, many families, Palestinian families in the West Bank. And um, even though many Gazans have been allowed to work in 
Israel, one could almost say de facto, that Netanyahu was allowing that, but actually supporting Hamas. His interest was not in peace. His interest is in the destruction of the Palestinian people. Now, does that justify the brutality of the Hamas? No. But we can say that something was going to happen, whether it would be an, an intifada in the West Bank or some other kind of violent reaction. You cannot oppress the people for so long and not expect them to react. It, this is the history of humankind. Every time you oppress a people, they will rebel. So in a way, it was a profound surprise. And in a way, there's nothing new that's happening today that hasn't happened in the past in, a, in the sense of a people responding to the ongoing oppression and ultimate aim of genocide of that people. Again, that does not justify in any way the reaction of Hamas and the brutal violence, but it does set a tone, and I agree with Maron, for what we might see when all of this terrible fighting is over, that at, maybe the world will say, maybe the Western countries will say, maybe some of the Muslim countries will say, okay, now we have to figure out how do we find peace. Perhaps after this, then the government will fall. You know, there's going to be an accounting. So, you know, maybe this is Netanyahu's last stand, as it were. I don't know. But I do also have share that hope that after the fighting and the destruction and the devastation is over, maybe it will put us on a new path. That is my hope. So let me take what you all have said and just talk about where this might lead and what might just happen here. I mean, you have the most right-wing government in the history of Israel. The people have called what Hamas I mean, it, it did in, in, in the, on the border of Gaza a war crime, and it, it can count as a war crime. But so are things that the Israeli army and Israel has done to Palestinians can also be counted as a war crime. And a lot of the people, as I was joking with a friend, not joking, but talking with a friend of mine, who, an Israeli um, writer who is living in Germany now, and he and I talked on the phone last night, um, it was saying that, uh, you know, most of the people who oppose this right-wing government live, live in Germany, or they live in France, or they live in Britain, or they live in the United States. They're not in Israel anymore. They're gone. So I, I really am curious what you all think is the future, given what we've just seen. I mean, the violence we just saw uh, in, 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 on the border of Gaza was incredible. It was, it was just, just uh, unbelievably horrible. Um, and there are still like 300 people, I think, held uh, by Hamas in, in, who were taken as prisoners. And the destruction of Gaza now is just immense. The, the entire place is being flattened uh, and about to be invaded if it hasn't already been invaded when we had this conversation. So where does that take? Where does that take the future of Israel and Palestine. What do you think happens next? And I'm, I'll start with Abba Shawi because we haven't we haven't heard from you in a few minutes. Let, 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 let me let you begin. So, so speaking about the, the the far future, I think we must first think about the the, the near future, meaning uh, about tomorrow, about next week. Every fit, this war uh, will last for a while, uh, for at least few weeks. Uh, maybe a few months. And during uh, that time, I think we have a uh, serious duty to uh, first make sure uh, about what's going on uh, in the West Bank because already the, the settlers, some of the settlers started to take advantage uh, on the fact that uh, the media and all of the focus uh, go to, to Gaza Strip. And um, we see uh, a raising of uh, violent events against Palestinians. Uh, and I think uh, we, the, the Israelis, and also the, the rest of the world, should not forget about uh, the millions of Palestinians that uh, 
living these days in the West Bank. Uh, we think that also we must remember uh, that about 2 million Palestinians uh, living right now in Gaza Strip. Uh, and I really do think that we, we have no choice but uh, fight the Hamas, but we must remember uh, that most of the Palestinians in Gaza Strip, they're innocent. Um, so I, I, I think we 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 must um, say it day after day. Must remember that uh, our uh, responsibility for uh, the, those Palestinians uh, regarding the the far uh, future, as I see it, um, Israel. We need to to understand that uh, there is no. I and 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 I I really do think that uh, more and more people will understand after this uh, terrible war that. We have no choice but find a solution with the Palestinians. Either one state solution, um, or two state solution, or three state solution. We must find a solution, which it's not uh, the current one. Um, I think this huge crisis will lead to this understanding uh, in, in levels of the society that uh, didn't have this uh, understanding before. So, I mean, Israel has had, and Moran, let you jump in here. Israel, Israel has had governments that are liberal and left. Israel has had, but in, and some very conservative right wing governments with Herut and other parties in power. And now you have a really far right government in Israel. Some might even call it a neo fascist government in Israel. So, picking up on what I said, how does that happen in this atmosphere? I mean, where, where, where could, how could this possibly lead to something different that Avishai was talking about? I think uh, in the in the short term uh, we have f first uh, uh, to the political side. It is the most unpopular government, maybe in the at least in the last uh, decades. Uh, it is extremely unpopular, uh, not only in the polls. Uh, where it uh, you know it uh, it has lost uh, according to the polls something like uh, between uh, four, 10 to 14 seats in out of a parliament of uh, 120 seats so it's, it's a considerable amount uh, uh, it lost in the polls but you, it, it's not only the polls just today uh, on the t on, on, on the TV and on social media, two ministers, uh, the the um, environment minister and the, the economy minister, uh, visited hospitals. Went to visit uh, on a visit to hospitals. They were chased out. They were driven out by ordinary people. That at least how they look like, they look like uh, classical uh, right wing w voters. Uh, they were really shouted and, uh, you know, humiliated and you destroyed Israel. Uh, so they are extremely, it's an extremely unpopular government. And the, um, the failure uh, of what happened uh, this Saturday morning. Is really um, it cannot it, it can no, I I don't see a government uh, uh, um, surviving with such a failure. Uh, intelligence, military uh, uh, um, infrastructure, everything, everything collapsed as if there's no government, as as if there's no state. So uh, I think, uh, and Netanyahu just today added guns into his government, and that's not uh, uh, a sign of uh, of uh, force, but a sign of weakness. But I think this government and uh, Netanyahu in general, uh, and Israel in general, is facing a very, really complicated situation because, yes, it can bombard uh, 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 Gaza without any problem. You know, it's it's uh, airplanes can can come and go, and uh, and they could uh, level down whole uh, neighborhoods in Gaza. 
uh, that's no problem. And they could, you know, kill 4,000, 4, 5,000 Palestinians, 6,000 Palestinians. This is no problem. The question is, uh, if the goal is to topple down Hamas, then they have to go in. They have to go in to take Gaza. There's no other way. You cannot topple Hamas without going into Gaza. Now, here that two very, very uh, complicated questions. The first one is, does the Israeli uh, uh, army is capable of doing it? It has not shown a very uh, high level of, of fighting against the Hamas in this uh, beginning of the week. Uh, so it's not very clear if they can do it. But let's say, uh, and in what price? And if the uh, if the Western world will allow it, and Arab countries will allow it, and whether uh, Hezbollah will will go into into action, so there are many questions uh, uh, here militarily wise. And, but the most complicated is the day after, because if you take Gaza, <laughs> there's two options: either Israel controls Gaza. This is Impossible. It will not happen. Israel will not run the life of two million Palestinians. It will not do it. That's for hundred percent sure. It will have to give it to someone else, and the only one it could give it to is Abu Mazen and the PLO. And giving it to the PLO means reviving the two-state solution. And this is the 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 thing that Netanyahu strived to prevent in the last 15 years. This is the core of his policy, to prevent the two-state solution by using Hamas and the division between Gaza and, and so that he will give a present to Abu Mazen of taking over Gaza and reviving the two-state solution. It is as if he's wiping out his whole heritage. The whole, everything he did in this last 15 years will be destroyed by himself. So here is a really complicated question. And I think what Netanyahu wants is just revenge, bombing, destroying neighborhoods, killing 5,000 Palestinians, then saying we want maybe kill one of the leaders of Hamas, uh, uh, Muhammad Def or, or, or Sinwar, one of the leaders of Hamas, and declare victory, but Hamas will stay. This will be not accepted by Israelis if this will be the result of this war. And even if Netanyahu will say we won, we killed 5,000 Palestinians, we killed 10,000 Palestinians, but Hamas stays in power after what they've done, he will be toppled down the next day. So it's a very complicated situation. It is. I mean, and that's what I'm trying to get through. I'm glad you, we, we, we're getting to the, Go ahead, Josh. You wanted to say something I can see. First of all, um, let's be clear. I, You know, we're talking of ten, tens of thousands of um, Palestinians who are going to die. And many, many Israelis. Um, this is, um, 5,000 Israeli uh, Gazans is, is, um, I think a gross under uh, estimation of, of what this is going to look like, but just like, uh, on the intelligence level, we had a profound failure of imagination. I think we have the same failure of imagination on the political level and the Palestinian authority and Abu Mazan that that is, is in fact a thing of the past. I mean, and this is where I see Israel, the Western countries, perhaps uh, diaspora Jewry, perhaps diaspora Palestinians. I mean, we're going to have to totally reimagine what is possible, and that may mean some type of new configuration because we can go the way of Iran and the way of war or we can find a new way. And I, to be honest with you, I, I can't at this point imagine what that is.
but that's where that is the road we're going to have to open up for ourselves the challenge of what it means to dream the impossible and how that will look i i don't know you know mark i i can't say what that is going to look like but it has to be some new configuration it has to be a willingness on the part of muslim nations on the part of western nations uh, a, a, a new sense of what, how we are going to make it safe for Israelis and Palestinians to live at peace, whatever that means. And I, I don't really know at this point, to be honest with you. Right, whatever that means. One state, two states, how many states? And I think that there's a question here about how more difficult it could become because if you look at the attitudes in the polling of Jews across the globe, a lot of Jews are getting tired of Israel, tired of supporting Israel, especially younger people. There's not a younger person in my family who isn't done. They're all done. Even the ones who, 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 who live there, even the ones who came from there, even the ones who, 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 have, you know, who, who used to be in love with Israel. They're, they're done. So I, I think that this latest war could be what what leads to the destruction of Israel itself. It won't be it won't be overnight. It won't be easy, but it could really be the beginning of the end. And and the question is, how is that prevented? How is something how is something new built? You know, and I I think that uh, when you look at the statements that Ben Gavir has made, the others have made, Smolnik have made uh, about Palestinians, literally saying just wipe them out, tear down everything they have, push them out. You know, it's like somehow Jews, we have become the neo-fascists that tried to kill us before. I mean, so, so it's a, it, to me, that's part of the complexity that we have to address. I mean, and Kansas said it happened. And now, Josh, I'll let you start. And Avishai, jump in. And Marone, jump in, please. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I think there are, among, you know, young people today, uh, there's, there's profound disillusionment about the state of Israel. But um, I, you know, this, I, I don't believe, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to be um, easy, but I, I don't, you know, I don't believe that the state of Israel is, is, is doomed, God forbid. But I do think that there has to be a new vision and hopefully that we have to identify new leaders who um, are willing to do what people have not been willing to do up till now. And that includes, you know, reaching out to young people in Israel, to, to our young people, and, you know, it's, and, and trying to, um, I, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm frankly at a loss for words. I, I think Israel at this point is in a lot of trouble. I don't know how long the world will tolerate um, what's about to happen in Gaza. There's going to be tremendous pressure. Um, and at some point, when the fog of war clears, there's going to have to uh, emerge uh, a new way of uh, approaching this. And I, I just, you know, again, I, I, I can't exactly say what it is, but I don't believe that that means the um, the it it it's not the end of uh, the state of Israel. It's just uh, uh, we have to really reevaluate uh, what we're what we want, you know. And um, it is it is very complex. I, I I wish I had a better answer for you, but um, I don't think it's you know. Yeah, I, I'd like to hear what the other. Yeah, I mean. Let me go to Avishai to bring him back in. Cause, uh, I mean, because in, in part, I remember your book, Avishai, this is a, a piece of what you've been writing about as well. Yeah, I, I must say that I agree with, uh, with Josh. Uh, I don't think it's the end of, uh, of Israel, but uh, I think it's, uh, we, we will find, uh, we, will, we will need to, to find out uh, a new, new division uh, here in between the, the the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. I mean, we, the Palestinians and the Israelis, will need to find a solution how to live here 
without uh, having war or uh, or these uh, attacks every few months few years uh, and 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 I I think there is an opportunity that after this uh, war it might happen uh, maybe with the help of the world maybe with the help of uh, of the United States uh, that will all also we need to understand that um, it need to be more involved uh, with the uh, who is trying to to make a peace here um and as as it was a uh, say before i i think uh, both nations like the Palestinians and the Israelis will uh, maybe elect or will maybe have a uh, new leader uh because those leaders both sides uh didn't lead us to to a good uh, good place yeah so i i don't know uh, at josh uh, what will be the the solution but i see the opportunity of uh, we uh, having some any kind of solution go ahead moron i see that critical look what are you about to say <laughs> um again if israel uh is uh if israel insists on being uh continuing to be an occupying uh, power and that occupation is really uh, 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 woven into its uh, politics and to its raison d'etre, then yes, maybe Israel, uh, I don't know, the word doomed is, is big, but uh, it will not, it will have very big difficulties I think if you add what happened what we saw from Hamas an organization with you know they were armed with Kalashnikovs basically camions and Kalashnikov <laughs> no armed uh, vehicles nothing no tanks of course no no cannons no 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 planes nothing just Kalashnikov and they took over uh, a territory of uh, a hundred uh, square miles, something like this. This is the calculation in, in one day. Uh, uh, Hezbollah is uh, better. Uh, who knows what will happen in Jordan at the end. So here and Iran, of course, and Syria one day will will uh, so so if israel uh, insists that the only way it knows to deal with the palestinian is by force then it might have really difficult uh, times in keeping itself together but at the same time i think people have this will of life people want to live in peace it's something basic, even if they don't see it now. And uh, I think uh, uh, I am, you know, I'm, I'm uh, one of the leaders of a movement that calls for a uh, kind of confederation, union between Israel and Palestine with open borders and freedom of movement two states yes because every people needs the rights to self-determination i don't see one state especially after what happened this week to see these people live together as if uh, uh there's one at, at ethos uh it is very hard to see uh, uh, a one state solution in this uh, moment uh, so we talk about two state solution but with open borders uh, jerusalem is a shared city I think what happened, if I come back to what I said in the beginning, the fact that the Abraham Accord is out and Saudi Arabia is out as as a way, as a tool to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I'm talking. Maybe there will be peace with Saudi Arabia, but it, does, it will not really affect. So the, the realization is that we are two people on this land, seeing the whole of it is their homeland. These people, these murderers, murderers from Hamas across the border, one of the evidences I saw, they first of all kissed the land. 
after they crossed the border and said, this is the land of our fathers and grandfathers. They are refugees from these very parts. You know, 75% of the Gazans are refugees, and most of them come from villages exactly there. So it is in the imagination of these people, of two people, this is one homeland between the river and the sea. And to a certain sense, we live in this uh, 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 space together. And the economy is to, in this uh, uh, Gaza, so now attacked by Israel, and where people came with such hatred, people pay in shekels when they buy falafel. They pay in shekel, in Israeli shekel. So there is a shekel zone that includes the Gaza Strip with Hamas in it. So the realities that are, make us shared uh, space are very strong. And I think once the realization will come that these are two people, that nobody is going anywhere, seven million people, seven million Jews, seven million Palestinians, nobody is going away. Uh, uh, so if we will have a place of our own in our own state, but at the same time sharing the land economically, demographically, uh, etc., I think this is a very, uh, it sounds maybe now a little bit like a fantasy, I think it's the most realistic uh, run, one the closest to reality. And maybe, maybe, I hope so. It is difficult to see to the clouds of war and hatred and uh, anger uh, and uh, such a will to revenge. Through these clouds, maybe we will see some glimpse of light that will lead us to the solution that I think is more or less the only solution possible. Two states in one land, because this is one land, but two states, I think this is, we will get there, I hope, with as less people killed as possible. But I think we will get there. Well, that was a beautiful, a beautiful closing thought. But let me let, let Avishai and and Josh also have one as we as we as we finish up. Go ahead, Avishai. I just wanted to say that uh, four years ago I met Miron and he spoke with me about his solution. And back then I thought it's a fantasy and it's imaginary and it will never happen. I must admit. Uh, and these days uh, I I think what uh, I agree with uh, with Miron uh, what he just said. Uh, again. Um, I think the, the, the day after the war uh, will be a possibility to a solution that we never thought it can it can happen. Um, and I hope it will. Josh, quick thought? Yeah, I would just add a couple of things. First of all, um, let's keep in mind that half of the population in Gaza um, are children. They're under 18. So um, that in, in, in itself is... is um, you know, difficult to imagine. Um, but I agree also with Maron and, and Avishai. Um, I, I think that, you know, I, you know, like, let, let's just look at the uh, success of the Jewish diaspora and the Palestinian diaspora. I mean, both of those are great examples of um, very strong economic uh powers and so there and and it, it's exactly what Maron said you know on on some level we're going to have to figure out and I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said before but we're going to have to figure out how we can rebuild an infrastructure so that the Palestinians who have the capability of of creating you know in whatever way they do ultimately resolving it with the Israelis because when it comes down to it, it's going to have to be uh, between the Israelis and the Palestinians of, of finding a way for um, some kind of economic parity and, and helping them and that level of cooperation um, because, and, and I, yeah, I, I would agree that it, it's some kind of open two state solution, but um yeah, it, it's going to require a 
a a very radical and and different way of thinking about what can be for these people who are now suffering so greatly. And we'll see how things play out over the next week, over the next weeks with this. And I and I first I just want to say that 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 in Israel and Pal- Israel Palestine at the moment, you know, Vashai Cohen and, and Mayor Rappaport, besides thanking you for being with us today, is having the courage to stand up to say what you say in the face of um, the kind of very right wing power that exists in Israel uh, and being a different voice. And that those are really important and, and societies need those voices. So I want to thank you both for that. I, th- I think there is a, there is a, there is a community near and uh, I'm, we are not alone. We are not alone. It's not. It's not a huge community. It's true, uh, and we are. Uh, but we are not alone. We are not alone. No, no, I know you're not alone. I know you're not alone. But it, yeah, and and Josh Salzman is, an, is a dear friend and old friend of mine. It's good to have you here as well, and and for standing up to the voices of peace that you've done uh, with your work. And I want to thank the three of you uh, again for joining us today, and look forward to more conversations. And I'll be staying in close touch. Great to be here, Mark. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. And thank you all for joining us today. And I want to thank our guests once again, Josh Salzman, Nir Abishai Cohen, and Maron Rappaport. And we will be linking to their work so you can see more about what they're saying. And of course, thanks to Cameron Grandino for running the show, David Hebden for the editing, and getting us on the air, and the tireless work of Kayla Rivera behind the scenes. And everyone here at The Real News for making this show possible. Now, please, let me know what you think about what you heard today, what you'd like us to cover. Just write to me at mss at therealnews.com, and I'll get right back to you. And we'll continue our coverage of Israel and Palestine, so let us know what you think about that, people you'd like us to talk to, issues you'd like us to raise, what you think about this coverage. So, finally, for Cameron Grandino, Keller Rivera, David Hebden, and the crew here at The Real News, I'm Mark Steiner. Stay involved, keep listening, and take care. Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please, tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.